Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. Today we're going to start our coverage on the red cards coming out in set 14 and we'll be starting with the red Vegeta structure deck. So if you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And if you guys want to help support the channel, there are many ways down in the description to do so, but particularly today guys, if you're looking for custom sleeves, play mats, any TCG accessories like that, make sure to use the link to your play mat down in the description. Using that link will get you 10% off of your order. And I think it's really cool that if you're going to look and be looking to play this Vegeta deck, you can get some Vegeta custom sleeves. I know a lot of players have been getting like uh, future Gohan sleeves, uh, Universe 2 sleeves, stuff like that. Really cool stuff. Again, link in the description, 10% off your order. Let's get on into the cards. All right, we're starting with the leader. Uh, I think this leader is super, super strong. The starter decks for this set are insane when you also uh, bring in the fact of the Mass Sand deck. But anyways, let's read the leader. So we have the Unawakened side. When this card attacks, draw one. Then it gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. Love that right off the bat. You can attack into 15k unisons and uh, not to worry about it. That's awesome. Awaken relies four or less. Or you have a red unison card with a specified cost of two in play. You may switch up two of your energy to active mode. Add cards from life to your hand until you have five left. And then choose up to one of your red unison cards with Kaba in its name and add a marker to it and flip this card over. So what's interesting here is that you can awaken with any two cost unison in play, but you get a few more or one more bonus perk if it's the Kaba that you play. And we'll read that unison in just a bit. The leader here, once card attacks, draw one, then choose one of your red unison cards with a specified cost of two and no keyword skills, and it gains double strike for the turn. Auto once returns spirit boost one when your opponent attacks your red unison card with a specified cost of two. Negate the attack, then choose up to one of your unison cards and gets plus 6,000 power for the turn. This effect is just insane. Like, we've been talking about the merit of Spirit Boost and how good or bad it could be. And yes, yeah, Spirit Boost is a pretty specific cost when a lot of other things in the game don't really have such a specific cost. But this one is just so good because it negates the attack at your unison. And yes, you do tick a marker off of it. But giving your unison plus 6k is almost like giving it a plus 10k in a lot of scenarios like you're going to prevent that unison from dying most likely for the rest of that turn like if you're playing a 15k unison it goes up to 21 for the rest of the turn and uh your opponent's gonna have to combo high or play really big battle cards and swing it into your unison if they really want to get rid of it so at the cost of one marker you're almost guaranteeing that your unison lives the rest of that turn which is actually kind of insane so anyways let's see the unison for the deck We've got SS Kaba Spirit Residence. We have a two cost unison auto limit one. When this card is placed in your drop area from a unison area, choose one of your mono red leader cards and gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. So that's also insane. Like if your unison does die, or maybe if you minus six it, we'll see the minus six in a bit, your leader gets a sense of being essentially, which is really good. But um, you're probably gonna be doing a lot of stuff to protect this unison. So that might not go off all the time, but if you're in a situation where you kind of can't control your unison going away, you still get rewarded for that, which is good. Activate main plus one, choose one of your opponent's battle cards, you using cards, it gets minus 10,000 power for the turn, just a generally good effect for the plus one. And then auto minus six, this one's a bit weird. If your opponent's life's at three or more when your mono red sand leader is attacked, deal one damage to your opponent. So that's one that you're only gonna be able to use defensively, which again is uh, is pretty weird. Like you're not ever gonna give them the you know you're not, you're not ever gonna go for the kill shot with this burn damage because your opponent's life has to be at three or more so like if they're going for a game on you and you're gonna potentially give them a card to their hand that's very strange but if you're in a situation where you know you're not gonna lose that turn like let's say uh they attack your leader and you like activate topo or something but you can still use the auto of kaba to burn them for one maybe put them to two and now they're at a much easier range to to get them dead the next turn so it's a very like weird niche specific effect that I don't think you're going to be using all that often. The plus one's decent, but I think that people that play this deck are probably just going to be playing four copies of Piccolo Jr. Descendant of the King. Uh, we all know this card does by now. The plus one draws insane. Uh, the minus two board wipe can be insane given the, the right circumstance. The auto is once again insane. Um, now you can awaken by putting either of these into play. But again, when you do awaken, you only give an additional uh, marker to the Kava. But I don't think it's going to be such a problem, especially once you're flipped. Like, you're going to be able to use a Spirit Boost 1 to essentially, again, guarantee your unison survives uh, for that next turn, which is going to be insane. So, yeah, I'm going to be testing Kaba at 4 just to see how it functions within the deck. Maybe there's something I'm missing as to where it really shines. But I really think that Piccolo Jr. is probably just going to end up outclassing Kaba because it, it gets you generic draw power and uh, has a bit more uh, usefulness in all of its effects. But uh, anyways, just something to keep an eye on. 
Going into the specific battle cards of the deck, though, we have Surprise Attack, SSP Vegeta. Love the name there, by the way, and the stats on it as well, because it's literally just paying homage to uh, Surprise Attack Frieza. So, Unique Critical Auto, if your opponent has two or more energy, when you remove a marker from one of your red unison cards using a Spirit Boost skill, you may play this card from your hand. So, you do get to play it for free, go for critical damage, much like Surprise Attack Frieza. And this, I think this card's incredible, by the way. Uh, probably a three of, I don't know, necessarily think it's a four of. Uh, I do actually wonder, now that I'm thinking about it, if there are any like decent Vegetas that can evolve over this because it is a free play Vegeta. But besides that, just like this card being a thing and you know, your opponent's probably gonna attack it to a 15K threat on their next turn if they can help it. This card kind of makes me wanna play Vegeta Saiyan Tag Team, which has never really been a relevant card, but it's a very interesting card. So activate battle, pay one, choose one of your U7 or U6 battle cards being attacked, AKA surprise attack SSB Vegeta. Um, it gets plus 6,000 power until the end of your next turn. Then play this card from your hand. You can't play Vegeta Sand Tag Team for the duration of the turn. So, like I was saying before, if your opponent's just gonna, you know, try to attack this SSB Vegeta Surprise Attack and, you know, just clear it off the board because they don't want to deal with critical anymore, you get to, you know, essentially sense you being it for the rest of the turn. So, if they have multiple 15k attacks, those are all gonna be nullified. And at the same time, you're also just establishing your board further, which is awesome. Um, I don't know if this will be that great in a deck like this if ssp vegeta is your only battle card you're trying to protect if you have other battle cards you're trying to protect that can be pretty good um so it really depends how you build it but i think this is a pretty interesting card to bring up with surprise attack ssp vegeta being the type of card that it is so i just wanted to kind of point that out to you guys my thoughts on that moving on we have surprise attack gohan four drop 20k activate battle for a red if you have two or more mono red battle cards in your combo area play this card from your hand then choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and it gets minus 10,000 power for the turn. I love this card. I really think this card is really, really good. I don't think it's going to be that amazing in the Vegeta starter deck, though, if you're building a shell around that. But I think this card is going to be incredible in the upcoming red Gohan deck, which we will do in another video talking about that archetype in and of itself. But yeah, that deck gets rewarded for comboing cards. And this is essentially like an arrival that's not multicolor. This card actually got me thinking about like an archetype potentially that could just be like that, like a, an arrival-ish archetype. But it's not relying on multicolors. So like, you know, you combo the colors of whatever your deck is, and then you get to play battle cards uh, from your hand after comboing those things. It just seems like a pretty cool, uh, like a mechanic for a deck. And this card is obviously a one-off type of card like that. But yeah, anyways, long story short, I think this card is gonna be really good in U7 Gohan coming up. Not necessarily so great in Red Vegeta, but still a good card you don't wanna get your hands on if you're interested in playing Gohan. Then we have Sun Goku Spirit Boost Warrior 4 Drop Deflect double strike dual attack so just with those stats alone uh, a lot of people have been comparing this card to a red obuni obuni being a four drop that also provides four points worth of damage uh, on the face of it it all depends you know what type of defenses your opponent has to deal with it like there are things that obuni's weak to this is not and then of course vice versa but this card has a lot more going for it than just that so permanent if you're if this card's in rest mode and you have a red unison card a specified cost of two in play this card and your red leader card get plus 1000 power so this thing's actually swinging for 21 which in a lot of situations doesn't matter it matters more actually on defense if your opponent's trying to attack into this and it also gives your leader a sense of being essentially because the plus 1000 is pretty much just as good as the plus 5000 in most scenarios auto limit one spirit boost one when this card's placed in your drop area from your battle area by an opponent's skill or ko'd play this card from your drop area so this card has incredible prote protection for itself it gives your leader a sense of being which is great protection for your leader in particular does rely on you having your two cost unison in play now that's not always going to be an issue especially if you just play some number of kabas and that's because of the next card coming up so we do have a tp card that that's coming out for the starter deck and we kind of know i think bandai said it in one or two places that they don't want the tps to be like vital cards anymore which is a great thing on their part because they're kind of taking that experience from the player base that's saying you know these cards are becoming way too expensive and they're too vital to play these strategies we have a problem here They've done a lot of things with the set 14 TPs as to where they're not necessarily vital for their strategies. This card, I would definitely say, is a lot more vital to this red Vegeta structure deck than most other TPs are to their strategies. But you don't need like four of it, right? I think you can get away with two to three copies of this card. Deflect Barrier Auto. When this card's played from your hand, play up to one SS Kaba Spirit Residence from your deck with three markers on it, then shuffle your deck. If you didn't play a battle card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring Barrier and it gets minus 3,000 power for the turn. I love the way this card's designed. Uh, you can play the unison from your deck, but if you choose not to, or if you choose not to play that unison in general, you still get to just uh, minus 30K, basically any battle card in the game, which is awesome. 
Auto once return spirit boost one. If your leader card is a mono red sand and this card in rest mode, when your opponent attacks your leader card, you may have it gain plus 5,000 power for the battle. So getting a free combo at the cost of one of your unison markers. Again, this structure deck and the cards around it use spirit boost in probably some of the best ways, like uh, re reborning themselves, giving your leader extra combo power, and getting attacks at unisons. That those are really solid spirit boost effects. So overall, I, I think this starter deck is going to be super good. I mean, it's no it's no surprise that red is already one of the best colors in the game i think the starter deck is just going to be absolutely incredible i've started putting builds together i'm gonna to do some more testing with it and i'll bring you guys a build when i when i feel more comfortable with it but i'm really optimistic about this stuff so for those of you guys that have been looking for a really good vegeta leader this is going to be your guys's leader it's going to be super good but anyways i want in the comments below what you think thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time